Are you trying to make your code run faster? In this video, we will be taking a deep dive into Python threads from basic to advanced concepts so that you can take advantage of parallelism and concurrency to speed up your program. So we're going to be talking about what are threads, when to use threads, threads without join, using join, thread with input arguments, multi-threading, daemon threads, threads with lock synchronization, thread queue communication between threads, thread pool executor, thread events, speed comparison for input-output tasks, and speed comparison for CPU tasks. We're going to be comparing some of the differences between multi-threading and multi-processing. If you want to test out the code in this video, go ahead and check it out on my website at kevinrobotics.com. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. So what are threads? So threads allow you to run multiple tasks in parallel on a single or multiple cores. And threads also allow you to use shared memory for passing and using the same data between threads. So here's a visual of a main thread and a few threads running in parallel. So when do you use threads? So typically there's two types of applications where you want to speed up your program. The first one is going to be the input-output task. So this typically is when you have something that you're waiting for, such as an input or output operation. So this could be network requests, file input-output, or database queries. You also have CPU-bound tasks. So these usually require heavy computation. So examples of this could be like math calculations. So there's a known problem with Python threads, and that's what's called the GIL or the Global Interpreter Lock. So what this does is it only allows one thread to run at a time, so there's not really a true parallelism. So in general, I would say Python threads are not good for CPU-bound tasks, but for things like input-output bound tasks where you're actually waiting for things, it would be pretty suitable. So for CPU-bound tasks in Python, it's probably better to use multiprocessing, which we'll go over at the very end of this video. Now, the most basic type of Python thread you could create is one without joining. So what does that mean? So typically, you'll have some main thread, and you'll have another thread that's running along with your main thread. So what does it mean to not join something? So here's a simple example. So first thing you do when you want to create a thread is you want to have up top an import threading. So once you do that, you could create a thread by using a threading.thread, and then you have a target, which will be your target function here. So our target function is print message, and then you have a thread.start. So here you can see when we run the program, we're going to see hello from the thread prints out first, and then immediately after it says main thread finished. And then you see that it keeps printing out hello from the thread a few times until the thread has completed. So this is what it means to not join a thread. So you end up having the main thread finish while the thread continues to keep going on. Now let's see what happens when we create a Python thread and actually use the join function. So you can see here, this is a diagram that represents it. So you're going to have a main thread. A thread is going to start running. And then after the thread finishes, we're going to continue back to the main thread. So in practice, what it looks like is you just need to add this line of code here that says thread.join. And you can see that when we try to run our program, it prints out hello from the thread. And then after that, it finally prints out main thread finished. So what this demonstrates here is that the main thread starts, you have your thread that starts running. And then after the thread finishes, the main thread will continue. Now, so far, we've been looking at threads with no inputs. So what happens when we actually have some input arguments? How does that look like? So here you see that it's pretty simple. You can see here that when we call our threading.thread, we have a new argument here that says args equal, and then our input arguments, which is going to be thread and the five. And you can see here that we just updated our print numbers function to also have two arguments here, the name and count. And this will allow us to pass arguments into our function. So here you can see when we run our program, it says thread says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then main thread finished. So this is super useful because now we could pass in arguments to our threads, and we could have different parameters as we wish. So up to now, we've only seen how to create a single thread. So how about creating multiple threads? So let's take a look at how to do multi-threading in Python. So here you can see this is a diagram of a main thread. And then let's say we have three threads, thread 1, 2, 3, running in parallel. How would this actually look like in code? 
So you can see what we're doing here is we have a for loop that goes through three times. So we're going to use a threading.thread function to create our thread. And each time we create our thread, we're going to append it to our list called threads, and then we're going to start each thread. And here we do the same thing with a for loop, but now we're joining the thread to the main loop. And when we run our function, you can see that our three threads prints out 0, 1, and 2, and then finally the main thread finish. OK, so now we're going to talk about daemon threads. So daemon threads is what allows us to have a thread that stops when the main thread stops. So you can see in this example, we have an infinite loop running, and this will be the function that we will be passing into our thread. So you can see here to actually create a daemon thread, we're going to have a daemon thread dot daemon and set that equal to true. So this is all you need to make it a daemon thread. So you can see that when we actually execute, we have running, 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 and then it says main thread finish. So what makes this thread stop is because we, you can see here in our main loop, we have a sleep set to three seconds. So after the three seconds, everything will stop together. OK, so now let's talk about threads with synchronization using locks. So here, imagine you have two threads and you're trying to access the same memory. How can we make sure that we don't access the memory at the same time? So here you can see that what we have is we have a threading.lock, and this will be our counter lock. Initially, you're going to have a counter that's set to 0. But what you can see here is that our main thread function here, what we have is we have a with counter lock. And what this does is it's going to implement the lock. And then once it's done with this loop, it's going to unlock. So the act of locking and unlocking will prevent the memory from accessing at the same time. But because of the GIL that we talked about earlier, this kind of problem doesn't truly exist. But if you're trying to develop in other programs like C++, this is something that's good to practice. Now, what do you do when you have threads that tries to pass data between the two threads? So this is where you want to use something like a queue. So you can see here that here's a visual of what's happening. So let's say you have one thread, and then you have another thread. This queue is what's going to be the bridge that connects the two threads. So here you can see this is an example here. So what we do is we create two threads. One we're going to call it a producer thread. Another one is a consumer thread. But what we end up doing is we just start and join the two threads. But here you can see that what we do is we purposely make the producer thread have a sleep of one second. And then the consumer thread, we have a sleep of two seconds. So this will simulate one thread being slower than the other thread. So you can see here in our main function, this is where we actually create the queue. And we pass the queue into our producer and consumer thread using the arguments. And then here we start and join the thread individually. So you can see here that the output of this is that we have our producer and consumer threads running at different rates as we expected. And then finally, the main thread will finish. But as I said before, this is super useful if you want to pass information between threads. And especially when the threads run at different rates, this is where queue is useful because you could have the faster thread store information in the queue while the slower one can just pull it when it's ready. So, so far, we've been starting and joining our threads by ourselves. What if you want to do it automatically? So this is where you have what's called the pool executor. So you can see here this thread pool executor is what's going to spawn the three threads, one, two, three. And this will automatically handle and destroy the threads for us. So you can see here, this is our Python code example. So you can see here that the key part that we're adding now is we have an import up here that says concurrent futures. So you can see here the key part of our logic is we have the with concurrent.futures.threadpoolexecutor, and we're going to have an input argument of max workers equals 3. So what this will do is it's going to create three threads, and then the three threads will run. It's going to be managed by this pool executor, so it's going to decide which tasks to go on which thread by itself, so all the starting and joining will be taken care of for you. So. So this part that says the executor.map, so what this will do is start our task five times, and it's going to handle which thread will take care of the specific task. Now, if you really want to know what's going on, you could find out the name of the thread by using the threading.currentthread.name. So this will tell you which thread is actually running. But you can see here that task one is being ran by thread zero, task two is thread one, task three is thread two. Task 4 is thread 0, and task 5 is thread 1. What if you wanted to control when you actually start a thread after you create the thread? So this is where thread events come in. So imagine you have a main thread, and you want to start it at a very specific time. There's something you could do about it. So you can see what we're doing here is we have a main loop. Inside of our main loop, we have a event equals threading.event. We're going to pass in this event into our thread. And you can see here that we have the event.set. So this will actually start our thread. 
And then inside of our worker, you see that inside we have an event.wait. So this will actually wait until the event is set. So you can see here that when we actually execute our program, we have worker waiting for event to start, main thread sets the event, worker starting work, and then work, 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 and then finally worker finish, and then main thread finish. So this is exactly what we expect, where we actually control when our thread starts. So let's take a look at a case study where we see the speed comparison for input and output tasks. So specifically, we're going to create a web scraper. So this will just fetch some data from these URLs that we have here. And you see that right here, this is with no threading. It takes us 0.6 seconds. And you can see that with threading, what we end up having is we get 0.3 seconds. So when something like this is time dependent and we're waiting on things, it's a pretty good application to use threads. So here we're going to do a case study on speed comparison for CPU tasks. We're going to be comparing the performance of using thread and without thread, and we're going to find out why we might need something like multiprocessing. So here you can see that this is a simple example here. We have a main function, and we're going to be calling our CPU bound task four times. So this CPU bound task right here is just adding numbers for a lot of times. And then finally, it's going to print out the time. You can see that this took about 1.578 seconds. So now we're going to implement the same function, but using multi-threading. So here you can see that we're creating four threads. And the four threads, we're going to start and join them. You can see that this process took about 1.538 seconds. So time-wise, the two things took almost exactly the same time. And you might be wondering why it's doing that. So the behavior that you're seeing is a consequence of running Python. So typically with Python, when you have multi-threading, you're going to have the threads on the same process, and they could be on the same core. We don't know exactly which core because it'll choose that for you. But when we have our example, when we didn't have a thread, that same thing is also on the same process. So technically what we're doing is we're having the same thing on the same process, so this doesn't really speed up anything. And moreover, because of the GIL lock, what ends up happening is that each of these threads is actually not running truly in parallel, but instead it's actually taking turns. So you can see that at any given instant in time, only one of the threads can be possibly running at a given time. So this is where you might want to do something like multi-processing, where you have several processes running in parallel. So here you can see this is an example of multi-processing. And you can see here that what we're doing is up top, we have a from multi-processing import process. Again, we have our same CPU bound task here. But instead of creating four different uh, threads, we're going to be creating four different processes using this way. And as before, similar to threads, we could start and join them. But you can see here by using multi-processing, we have a total of only 0.58 seconds to complete this entire task. So you can see here that with multi-processing, we have a significant improvement in time, almost three times better, whereas no threading and multi-threading, the time is about the same. So hopefully this gave you a pretty good overview of Python threading and a glimpse of multi-processing. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.